Hey guys, I'm JK Ultra, and I'm going to teach you how to read the Akashic Records. This information is going to be coming from Linda Howe, Howe, H-O-W-E, and it's from her book, How to Access the Akashic Records. Now, I thought about this for a while because many people have asked me to do a video about how to access the records yourself, and initially I just directed people to Linda's book. Um, and I absolutely still believe that you should get Linda's book because there is more information in there. So the main reason that I wanted to share this information today is because there's a lot of gatekeeping when it comes to accessing higher knowledge. Yes, you can do a hypnosis session, and I do think that's a great resource. Um, I'm not saying that this is a full replacement for that. However, a lot of the questions that you would want to ask under hypnosis, you can actually access the answers yourself through the Akashic Records. But universal consciousness is available to all of us, so I actually did consult with the records myself, asked them if it was appropriate to do this video. They said yes, and they also gave me a message for you guys. Um, I don't have it in front of me, but by the end, I will read the message to you, um, which is a really beautiful message. Um, as always, my experience with the Akashic Records is so enlightening, so beautiful. Every single time I access the records for myself or for friends, um, I don't offer sessions, uh, even though the records have encouraged me to. Um, Whenever I do, they give such beautiful perspective that is so much more than my intuition alone would be able to give me. And if you stay tuned till the end, um, I'm also going to share a couple of stories where I really received information from the records that is not exactly what I wanted to hear. So the records will never um, give you something that's scary or harmful or judgmental or shameful but they will check your ass, okay? Um, and I have a couple of personal experiences about that too. So let's get started. Uh, this information is coming from Linda Howe's book called How to Access the Akashic Records. I will have links below to her book. Um, I have many notes from the book and we're gonna go over them today. I do still suggest that you support her and her work. Also, any way that you can support her if you do just use this information. You can get her book and I will also have some suggestions for some other books below. Yes, she does do courses and she does certify people to do courses, but actually um, she did also make this a book available for like $14 or less. So for anyone to be able to access this information for $14, or in this case, I'm kind of giving them the giving away, you know, the the milk for free, so to speak. But um, I feel that based on what she says in the book and based on what I asked the Akashic Records, that this would be okay. And I'm going to read you the quote that made me feel comfortable with sharing this information. She said the reason that she ended up giving this valuable information, she says, humanity has evolved from dependence on a spiritual parent to spiritual independence and responsibility. And I really enjoyed that because earlier on in human history, we did need a spiritual parent like God. Not to say that there is no God and we will get into that because um, this prayer actually does have a little hint of Christianity. Don't run away, don't get scared if that's not for you. Um, if you are a Christian and you're afraid to access this information, don't run away either because um, actually in the Bible, they talk about the book of life. This is actually in all different cultures. They talk about these records that are basically the information that is available to everybody. So let's start by saying this is different than channeling. The difference with channeling is that you are allowing a entity to enter your body or to speak through you. Now with the Akashic records, when you are accessing the records, you are allowing the Akashic field to move through your body. I know that that sounds pretty close, but the Akashic field is actually universal information. You've probably heard about this from Edgar Cayce. He was called the sleeping prophet. And at the time he was one of the only people who 
was publicly accessing the information of the records and referring to it in that way. Now, today, you don't need to be Edgar Casey. you don't need to be a famous prophet. This information is available to everyone in the way that Linda Howe says, because we've evolved from a spiritual parent from being dependent to being independent and having a self-responsibility for our own destiny and our own journey. That, that said, it is an honor and a privilege. This should not be taken lightly. It is a responsibility and it is a service. Okay, and I don't just mean as a paid service, and we will get to that later. Um, I'm not doing this video so that you can become a practitioner and charge people. I'm not saying you can't. If you do decide to do that with this information, please just don't watch one video and say you're a professional because that is literally the information. This, that's the reason I want to give this information is because I'm tired of seeing that. But you can do readings for others. And if you do want to do this professionally, if this video and this information really resonates with you, please do more research, get more information. I will have more books linked below. So, um, working in the records also requires knowledge of the concept of reincarnation. From the perspective of the records, all souls are eternal. It holds the records of each soul from every lifetime in all eternity, okay? So if this is something that you're looking to do um, professionally, like I said, don't just, you're not a professional just from watching this video. You need to be an expert of reincarnation, karma, and all of these things as well. Um, don't just take this and run. You, if you are going to do it, it is a responsibility. It is a service to humanity. It is an honor and a privilege to be able to access the universal knowledge that is available to us. And you do have a responsibility to not take advantage of people. Okay, now that I have my little disclaimer, what is the Akashic Records exactly? Um, and I just love the Akashic Records. Um, they're so important to me. Um, if you've watched my video about my hypnosis and about my astral travel, and I will talk about that. Um, let me just write that note so I don't forget. Oh, geez. I just lost one of my papers. Okay. Also guys, sorry if my sound changes at some point, because when I was in the bathroom putting this little mic on, I have two of these um, little wireless mics. Sorry, I'm playing with it while it's... And I went to clip it on my shirt and it flicked the out all over by a force of nature and fell into the toilet. Yes. So if my sound cuts out, I actually didn't get to charge this mic. I only charged the one that fell in the toilet. Um, so yeah, I think that's done. Uh, but that's for another day, another time. Okay. What is the Akashic Records? According to Linda Howe, and to me, when I read this, this sounds like how the records talk. Um, it doesn't sound just like regular speech because I, whenever I have done readings for friends, um, when people are in that position that they need, um, advice, whenever they read the the message that I give them from the records, they're like, wow, this doesn't talk like you at all. So when I read this, it resonates to me similar to how the records uh, sound. The Akashic Records is a dimension of consciousness that contains a vibrational record of every soul and its journey. This vibrational body of consciousness exists everywhere in its eternity in its entirety and is completely available at all times in all places so you see that a dimension of consciousness that is everywhere at all times always available and has the entire story of every soul the records are an experiential body of knowledge containing 
everything that every soul has ever thought, said, and done over the course of its entire existence, as well as all future possibilities. Now, many of you that do know about the Akashic Records already, you probably know that it records everything that's ever happened. And that's usually the way I've described it. But when I was reminded when I went through this book and took all these notes for you guys, when it also says everything you've ever said and every thought you've ever had. Don't get scared. Don't get scared. It's okay. It's a non-judgmental place, okay? So don't get scared. But do remember that, you know? That sometimes if you're not being honest with yourself, maybe you're acting a certain way, but internally you're um, feeling a different way. And I don't just mean that in like a regular, someone says how you're doing and you say fine. But like if you are truly being deceptive and you're the only one that knows, oh, it's gonna be in the records. <laughs> so keep that in mind. Um, but again, not to shame or fear monger or anything, but I just think it's really important that we also remember its thoughts as well. And that also reminds us of the power of thought. This dimension of consciousness is so in tune with everything that even the slightest impression of anything anywhere makes an imprint on it. So something as small as a thought, which in our reality doesn't look like anything, but it's so in tune with all of the frequencies and all of the energies that actually everything makes a little impression on the records and goes into the files. Um, the records are not exclusive to anyone or anything. They are available to all. Remind yourself of that because there's many people who act like they have access to the records and we all do, um, but who act like their access is more special than another person's. Um, we're all special. Okay. Um, this is also another thing that I've really enjoyed the spoken word facilitates the movement of energy. And that's because we will get into this, this method that Linda Howe teaches, there are several methods and we will get into that. But this method uses spoken word to access the records. So the spoken word facilitates the movement of energy. So not only is that in real life, um, the spoken word is facilitating the movement of energy, but also in order to access the records. Also, when you are reading from the records, the words that we assign to the information that's coming through, either through th thought, writing, or speech, has a frequency um, that is uh, facilitating that information. So, what is the Akasha? And that's where the origin of the word Akashic records comes from. This is one term that we use for it. Like I said, it's called, I believe, the book of life in the Bible. Um, I, Jesus talks about it in the Bible. Um, also in Linda Howe's book, she gives the examples of where it comes up in different places. So her definition for the Akasha is very interesting. So other times that I've talked about the Akashic records, I've used a different translation, which is the more common translation, which means ether. So I've always described it, not in Linda Howe's way. When I've described it myself, I say that it's the records of the ether. However, this is the Linda Howe method and we're using Linda Howe's information here. So Akasha is the Sanskrit word, which means primary substance in which all things are formed energy in its first and earliest state before it is affected by our individual consciousness. So what they're saying is the Akasha is not just the ether, or maybe ether is more complex than we understand. And it's the primary substance that was the primary energy that was there before all of our individual consciousness started to manipulate that energy and become creators and create worlds and create experiences and live lives and create karma and all of this. 
So that's why this is accessible to everyone, because this is the primary substance that is all, which is another t a reason why sometimes you hear people when they talk about the records, um, they talk about like how the records is not like a place that you go, although sometimes we do perceive it that way. The same way that like in a dream or under hypnosis, sometimes you'll see like maybe a, a staircase and to us, a staircase symbolizes like the changing of levels or a passage from one place to another. Same thing with like doorways, um, the doorways of perception. Sometimes you see doors in hypnosis or in meditation or in visualization or in astral travel. It's not because there's actually doors. It's because doors represent a passage to us from one place to another. So when we see this as a library, um, I see sometimes people get a little annoyed at the idea like, it's not a library. Okay, but we also have to use images and words and symbols that we can understand. And what is a library? It is a place that is just abundant of all different knowledge from all different places, from all different people, and it's all available to us and we could just pick it out and enjoy it and be able to experience all these different things from all these different books. So I do really resonate with the idea of it being a library. And as you've seen in my other videos, the one about hypnosis and about the Akashic Records, when I astral traveled there, that's what I was writing before I dropped my paper and started telling you that my microphone fell in the toilet. Um, okay, yes, I will. Um, talk about that because I did get a little bit more information about that when I asked the Akashic Records today. So, um, oh, and one more thing, sorry. But just take a minute to process what we went over. Um, and the message that they gave me, because they did give me a message for everybody watching this video. Um, so I wrote that because I have to make sure that I pull it up um, before the video is over. Okay, so um, the records are a body, uh, are a light body of universal self-awareness. That's a loaded sentence. The records are a light body of universal self-awareness. Wow, okay. They contain universal consciousness and are based in the three main components, mind, heart, and will, okay? Every time we access the records, we access the light and become enlightened by it with an increased sense of peace and well-being. Energy from the records will come through your crown and anchor into your heart. Energy from the records come through your crown and anchor in your heart. So this is really important um, because the method that we are learning through Linda Howe, very specifically, and we'll get a little bit more into this as we progress, but this method is meant, according to her, to access the heart of the records, okay? Now, some of the other methods that people use will access different parts of the Akashic records. So, when you saw in my other video about the time that I was practicing astral projection, I was like, how do I get to the Akashic Records? I just want to go so bad. And I want to get their knowledge so bad. So I was like, well, I guess I could just practice astral traveling and then go there myself. So when I did ask the records, uh, they said that I accessed through a different method. And that's why I ended up in a different part of the records. Okay, so this is really important. The records are governed and protected by a group of non-physical beings called the Lords of the Records. Lords with an S. Now these Lords of the Records, they ensure the integrity of the records. Not only who can access it, but the information that they receive. So these lords of the records are basically the watchers and keepers of the records. When we access the records, we are not accessing the records in its entirety. 
we are working with the masters, teachers, and loved ones. If you are doing reading for yourself, it'll be your masters, teachers, and loved ones. If you're accessing it on behalf of someone else, then you're gonna be getting the information from their masters, teachers, and loved ones. And we're gonna go over what are the masters, what are the teachers, what are the loved ones? So when you're retrieving information, you're not accessing it yourself. That's another important thing to remember because this method is calling upon those basically similar to spirit guides, and we will talk a little bit more about that. It's We're asking them to provide us the information. Now, the Lords of the Records, they are a different than the masters. So the lords of the records and the masters, they're both non-physical beings. They have never lived any life on earth before. They've never been physical. However, the teachers and the loved ones have been physical on earth at one time. Now, you will not see these beings in the records using this method. She says you won't ever. However, the method that I used through astral travel, I actually did see beings. Um, but that was a different method. So I accessed in a different way. That's not what we're talking about. We're talking about Linda Howe's way. Um, because this is a very popular method that most people use who are accessing the records. And it really is this easy and it takes practice. And this is why I want to empower you guys to do this for yourself. So um, you're not meant to see these beings because you need to focus on the energy of the records and not these individual beings. So imagine if one of these beings were to show themselves for you the way that humans are, you know, we're a little problematic and we would just become obsessed. We'd be like, ooh, this master, uh, and then become kind of obsessed with it and maybe not take just the information and kind of go into idol worship or deity worship. So the Lords of the records, those are the guys, the watchers, the people who really um, hold it down and protect the records and the integrity. They do not work with individuals. You're not going to ever work directly with the Lords of the records because they are working at a universal level. They're not dealing with us directly. However, the masters, teachers, and loved ones are there to deal with us directly. So, the masters. Your particular masters, the ones that will be accessing when you go, the masters that you're talking to or the masters that you'll be speaking to on behalf of other people, they have been with you since your soul's inception. So the moment that your soul, and my soul series will be coming out soon on YouTube, but if you're on TikTok, go watch it on there. Um, souls are born, but really with the way they're born is they're breaking off from a hive energy, from like a source energy, which is a collective. And then when you get an I am consciousness, I am this, I am, I exist, you individualize and break off from that source God energy. So from that moment, you have a master or masters who are with you. These masters have even assisted you on choosing your path in this life, but also your soul's entire journey. So they were there to assist you in the journey of your soul. It's amazing. Now, the masters will call upon the teachers and loved ones. So the masters are more like the guides. They're the spirit guides, um, the ones that are always with us our entire life. Now they'll call upon teachers and now teachers may or may not have been in physical bodies before. Um, they may have been in a physical body with you before. And um, your teachers, they could be regular people. They could have just been like, me or you, regular people, or they could have been huge influential figures of society like Jesus or Cleopatra or, you know, um, Mother Teresa, something like that. Um, however, 
they will always remain anonymous to you because they don't want you to become dependent on their identity. They want you to value the information. So this is my personal opinion. This is not Linda Howe's opinion. I am a bit weary of these kind of famous figures that people work with or talk to. Um, I don't know if people are always dealing with the people they think they're dealing with. You know, sometimes people think they're working with a specific deity and maybe they are, maybe they're not. Uh, there's no rules about honesty in the spirit world. However, the wording of this method, when we get into it, is intended to only work with beings of light and those beings are gonna be, um, you know, probably truthful because you're calling upon your masters and teachers and loved ones. Why would they want to lie to you? Because they want you to succeed. So the teachers, they are not with you for your entire soul's journey from the beginning to all of your ascension path. They're actually only with you for certain lessons. For example, if you're learning to overcome trauma with feminine energy, the trauma of women, um, you know, this long history, um, the last 5,000 years that we know of, of women, you know, being oppressed and having their power taken away. If that's part of your soul's journey, I do believe that's part of my journey in this life also. Um, now you would have maybe a teacher that specializes in the divine feminine. Once you complete that lesson and integrate the energy and from that teacher and from that experience and heal that karma and maybe even heal that karma collectively, that teacher is like, okay, cool. You know, you're not in third grade anymore. Uh, maybe I'll see you in the hallway. Uh, maybe I'll see you in the cafeteria, but you're not gonna be in my class anymore. So the teachers are lesson specific. Now, the loved ones, this is very self-explanatory. Loved ones are people that you know in this lifetime who are now deceased. They could be your grandparents. They could be parents. They could be any type of person uh, who was a loved one in this life. However, they're most likely never going to identify themselves as who they are. Um, because they don't want you to become attached or dependent on them. They want to give you this information. It's not meant for you to be dependent. However, in some rare cases, they will, if it's going to be beneficial to you to be able to receive the information. But it's not usually, according to Linda Howe, they're not gonna like be showing themselves all the time. They might show you to make you feel comfortable, but it's a rare occasion because it's not really necessary. That's not, you know, this is not mediumship. If you're interested in mediumship and stuff like that, then that's a different modality um, that you can totally explore, um, which is different for this. And we're gonna get into the reasons why, but first, angels and saints. Now, because the Akasha, is the primary substance of all that is, the angels and saints do exist there. However, they're in a different realm. They're in a different part, so to speak, of the Akashic records. So like, I don't know, you might be in the library of the records. They're gonna kind of be in a different section of the records than what you're gonna be accessing using this method. And once again, like I talked about, when I astral traveled to the Akashic records, the information that I got, I did ask the records about it before I did this video because I was like, hmm, I know I read this book already, but when I was really going through and taking these descriptive notes for you guys, um, I was like, huh, now I, I did see an angel. <laughs> um, I did see an angel. So what was that about? Um, because there was an angel in the Akashic records and this is an angel that Anytime I've, when I've astral traveled to there, the two times that I did, I saw the angel both times. Also one time in a meditation, which I think I also talked about in that video, which was a very um, pivotal day in my life. Uh, 
I also saw an angel in the library, uh, the same angel in the records. So I'm like, well, what was that about? Because if she's saying they're in a different realm of the records, now they said, because I used a different method, I accessed a different part, which was funny. What they said is like, if she's, if this method by Linda Howe accesses the heart of the records, they said I was accessing the spleen of the records. I'm like, what does that mean? They're like, it's a metaphor. They, the more that I access the records, they know my sense of humor and they really like uh, mirror my sense of humor a lot. Or maybe, you know, that's the type of joking nature that we have with each other. Um, and I was like, what do you mean? They're like, okay, like you didn't go through the front door. You went through a back door to get to the records. So you think you walked in the front door from what you saw, but you actually kind of walked in through the back of the building. So that's why you were shown the beings that you were shown. Not because you went to their part, they came to meet you where you were entering. Um, so, like she says, you're not going to access the angels or the saints using this method. Um, they're doing a different work in the records. So they're not there to be giving the information. They have other things that they do. How are the angels and saints different than the masters and teachers? Although they do similar work, the masters don't have specific identities. Angels do have specific identities. So the masters and the angels are similar and the saints and the teachers are similar because they both have a physical they both had physical lives on earth at one time so the saints one time did live on earth so you know if you are a person you know catholic i don't know if other types of christian do um if you are a catholic and you um work with saints pray to saints um it's similar to the teachers because they also were people who once walked on earth and they're similar, but they're actually doing different work in a different part of the records. So using this method, you're going to be calling upon the masters, teachers, and loved ones, and they're going to be the ones giving you the information. Okay. So what are the uses of the records? And we will give um, some more specific examples towards the end, but for now, just to give an overview as we're working through this information and making it digestible, um, that some of the uses of why you would want to access the records or what, how they could benefit you. Um, personal or spiritual development. And that's gonna be pretty much the most important. Um, the reason you access the records is for your personal development, your spiritual development, advice in those areas. Also, another one that is really cool, which I don't explore enough. Well, that's not true, um, but I should use it more, is for artistic endeavors. Now you can open the records for yourself, open your own records, and then, now you can open the records yourself and use it for writing, painting, composing music. Now, of course, like we said in the beginning, this is an honor and a privilege to be able to access the universal field of information, okay? So don't get greedy. Don't be a dick, okay? Don't like access the records for only self-serving reasons, you know? Yeah, you're an artist, you wanna bring your art to the world. However, if you're going to access the records for your art, make sure that you have the intention that this art is going to help someone. This art is going to move someone. This is going to bring someone an emotion. This is gonna tell a story that needs to be told. So that is also my opinion. She says, she just says you can use it for those things. But because you know we're doing a very abridged version here, I do wanna make some of those things clear. You have a responsibility. If this is something that you're going to be working with, you have a responsibility to be of service. Now you can benefit, but be of service. Do it in a way that's like, it's not like, ah, ah, I'm going to access the records and I'm going to 
get the greatest song of all time so that I could become the richest person on earth. You know, I don't think that, I mean, probably the Lords of the Records won't give you it because they, you know, get, keep the integrity, but you also don't want to be in that position. You want to come to the records with the energy of like, look, I want to share this beautiful thing with the world and I want to do it in the best way possible. And I believe that it's my purpose to share this with the world. You know, so like keep it purposeful. So um, another reason to access the records would be help in managing your life, um, guidance, support in your life, your family life, your work life, in your community, um, or on behalf of someone else who needs help with their family life, their work life, their community. Um, so this is the thing is you can access it for, I, I would say, 99.99% of the time when I access the records, it's for that third reason is for guidance and support or advice. Um, primarily the type of, you know, readings that I do for people, um, friends, like I said, um, not professionally. Um, it's pretty much always advice. Um, sometimes curiosity, um, but sometimes I don't ask the curiosity questions. Um, I kind of feel it out and see if it's if I feel like it's appropriate. All right, so let's get to the method. Um, there's many different ways to access the records. This method, the Linda Howe method that we are talking about today is called the pathway prayer process. So this is a method where we are going to be accessing through light, sound, vibrations, light and sound vibrations, sorry, of spoken word. So this is a method that uses spoken word to access the records. There are many different prayers and you can see this. There's different um, Akashic record teachers and different people online. They're not all going to say the same prayer. This is the prayer that was given to Linda Howe to give with the people. Other people received other prayers. I actually do know one of the other ones. I never used that method. I actually did an attunement, you know, like similar to a Reiki attunement. I actually did an Akashic Record attunement once. Um, I don't know. I don't know. I, I won't link it. I don't know. I'm not saying I won't suggest it. If you come across it and it's something that you want to do, then that's something, sure, you could do. Um, I don't know if... I don't know if it was necessary. Um, and I don't know, it might be some type of clear audience thing. I don't know, but I got this like feeling in my ear that stayed for months and then sometimes it comes back. Uh, so I don't know. So there's many different methods. If you want to do this professionally, I do think you should explore and learn more about the records, learn more about the different methods. Um, and really become an expert of it before you say that you are an Akashic Record reader professionally. So um, those different prayers, once again, access different parts of the records. This Linda Howe method, she was told, is to access the heart of the records, okay? Linda Howe was given this pathway prayer by her masters in the Akashic Records. Now this part's really interesting. She was given this prayer on September 11th of 2001. So she said she was actually given it in September, a little bit before that. And the first time that she ever shared that she got this prayer a couple days prior, the first time that she ever like vocalized this prayer, that this is what was happening. This is a way to access it. This is the information I got was literally that morning of September 11th when the towers went down. So she said that she believes that the message came through at that time because the hearts of humanity were so intensely opened. Uh, the hearts were ripped open, you know? Everyone was in such a crazy intense place emotionally that 
she feels that's the reason why this method came through at that time and why this is, you know, why this method is also meant to access the heart of the records. And like we said earlier, also the information is going to come through your crown into your heart. So it's a very heart-based method. It's a very heart-based style. And it's because this was also created very charged. I think a lot of people who use this um, don't know that information or don't remember that information because it's literally like one sentence in the book. Um, I didn't remember it until I was taking these notes. And that's very, uh, you know, regardless of how people feel, obviously, you know, there's many different informations and stuff that has come out um but at the end of the day it was a life-changing event for everybody on the planet um and especially in the united states and you know i grew up maybe like three four miles from uh the world trade center um so i was very close when that happened uh you know people in my school, lost their parents. So it's definitely, um, you know, a very emotionally charged thing. And like we said in the beginning is that the reason she was given this method and was told to share it with the world is because humanity switched from needing to be dependent on a spiritual parent to having spiritual independence and taking responsibility for their own soul. Now, let's talk briefly about some of the other methods so some other methods, we have other prayers given by different people. Um, there is also um, some people access the records through hypnosis. Now that is a little bit closer to maybe the Edgar Casey method because Edgar Casey would get himself into a trance state. Um, now me, I actually use the Silva method, which I'm gonna link below. And I'll talk a little bit about that later more, but I use the Silva method of hypnosis, which basically, well, of meditation, but it's kind of similar to a self hypnosis because you train yourself to go to alpha brain waves, then you train yourself to go to theta brain waves. And I actually personally do that before I read the prayer. However, when you're learning, um, Linda says, don't, don't mix modalities until you know what you're doing. Another way that people will access the records is through the healing symbols of Reiki. So sometimes people are able to access the Akashic records through Reiki. Um, there's also others who access it through meditation. If you have been guided to this method, it's because this is an effective resource for you personally. Um, many people who are drawn to this method, the path, pathway prayer process created by Linda Howe, and her masters, um, many of the people who are drawn to this method or come and get this information of how they want to access the Akashic Records, uh, many of them have prior experience with the records in past lifetimes or between lives or even in this life have had access with them before. So if you are drawn to doing this, um, you might actually, you know, have experience with the records already and this is actually just a remembrance now we'll get to the nitty-gritty uh there is guidelines and ground rules and these are extremely important so don't you dare skip over this part okay now these guidelines are in place to encourage kindness and respect for the records and for the information received like we said this is a responsibility it is also an honor and a privilege and you must also treat the records with respect as well as yourself with respect and whoever you're do accessing the records on behalf of with respect, okay? Um, and I just wanna keep drilling that in because accessing the records is not something that is for the special ones, you know? This is for everybody, but the lords of the records maintain the integrity. So if you're not maintaining your integrity, you're not going to get information. And you, your ego might convince you that you're getting information from the records um, when you're actually just freaking pulling it from your own uh, narcissistic tendencies. So, like I said, this is why we want to follow the ground rules. 
um, because it's really important to do that for you to also get information with integrity. Now, this is a dimension of consciousness. You know, you're accessing a dimension of consciousness. Big stuff. So here's some of the ways that you prepare before accessing the records. The way that you live your life is your choice. However, the way you approach the records requires conscious and deliberate choices. So, number one, abstain from alcohol and all substances, including weed. Okay, she doesn't say including weed in the book, but she means including weed. Um, for at least 24 hours before accessing the records. If you're taking prescription drugs required for your health and the balance of your body, it will not impact your access. Recreational drugs and mind altering substances, no matter how your tolerance is, will impact your ability to access the records. Now, she doesn't give specifics about this, but clearly, you know, if you're on heart medication or something like that, um, taking heart medication is not going to impact your ability to be able to access the records. Now, if you're taking Xanax, I don't know. That's my opinion. Mm, it's a mind altering substance. Okay. Um, now for me, this was a very important guideline because, um, I smoked weed every day of my life for over 20 years. I started smoking when I was 12. Um, I'm 34 now. So it's a lot. Um, very, you know, for a majority of my life, there would pretty much be almost no days that I didn't smoke. Um, and it's also like completely normal functioning part of my life. It's kind of the same as whether I'm smoking or not smoking. It's just was always a part of my life. Now, when I started to use this method, uh, I had to make a choice because for me to not at the time for me to not smoke weed for 24 hours is like, okay, this is a conscious decision. <laughs> um, and as I started to access the records more, you know, I would take a break from smoking and access the records and then just really get this beautiful information. And the information was coming through saying that the weed is not supposed to come with me the whole way. You know, it wasn't meant to take this whole journey. Sure, they acknowledged that it was a part of my journey. You know, when I was younger, I absolutely believe that it helped me uh, because, I mean, they say, you know, you're not supposed to smoke that young because you're not emotionally developed. But also, I'd probably have really bad anxiety and depression if I didn't, you know. Um, so at a young age, it was a coping mechanism for me. And I also do think it benefited my health because, you know, I mean, it was a Cat Williams joke where he's like, you know, uh, you smoke weed and you get a different perspective. You like smoke and you're like, first you're stressing that they're like turning the lights off, your bills aren't paid, the collectors are calling. Then you smoke weed and you're like, fuck them. Let them turn off the lights. I got some candles I've been waiting to burn, you know? So like that was something that definitely got me through my childhood. I mean, you still are a kid at 12. Um, you know, it was something that got me through my childhood and got me through a lot of traumatic years of horrible shit. Like, so, and it helped me to be able to have a sense of humor about it all. I mean, like I said, my last name and the last names like kind of have an impression on us, uh, or your just name in general has an impression and we will get into that in the next part actually. Um, but my name is, the last name is Carmody, Karma and Comedy. So for me to be able to laugh off a lot of the fucked up stuff and to be like, damn, well, I'm gonna have to make a joke out of that because what else am I gonna do? Uh, wallow in it, ew. Um, so number two, use your current legal name when accessing the Akashic Records. So. Although the, act, the, the records have access to all your lifetimes, we use your current legal name 
to access them. Each of our names have a vibration, and this allows us to access the information that would be most relevant to the subject at this time. So even though you might have had a hundred or a thousand different lives um, and had all different names in those lives, and maybe on the spirit world, you're known by something different, um, your name right now is how you access the information that you need right now. So in the case of legal name changes, such as marriage or any other reason that you would change your name legally, um, you have changed the energetic frequency of your life as well as the direction of your life. So you've actually taken a different life path when you change your last name or your first name or your name altogether. Um, so use the name that is on legal documents. Even if you don't like that name or you go by another name, a familiar name, a nickname, and they say, she says the rule of thumb is how does the IRS know you? That's how you kind of decide what to call yourself by. Um, because we have so many different things. Like for me, uh, legally, um, on like all my documents, it's actually just a middle initial. It's not really my middle name. So for me, when I access the records, I use my middle initial as opposed to the whole middle name. So that's because that's my legal name. That's what's on my um, ID and all that. Okay, number three of our guidelines and preparation for accessing the records. Uh, be responsible for your time in the records. Between 15 minutes and an hour is an appropriate time to spend in the records. Now we are gonna get into your first 30 days when you're learning. This is, can change a little bit. But say, for example, if you're doing a reading or something, don't really exceed an hour. Um, you might become exhausted. You might not have the same integrity of information. If you're using it creatively for an art or something, you know, try to stay within an hour. Um, of course, if you're in a flow state and you're going, um, you know, you're painting away, I'm not gonna say, you know, oh my God, I exceeded an hour, I disrespected the records. If you're in the flow state and it's flowing through, then that's, I think, perfectly fine. But you wanna be responsible for your time in the records. You know, you don't wanna spend all day in there for no reason, and you don't wanna spend too short of time in there, except for when you're first learning. So, number four, ground yourself after each time you access the records. Now, your consciousness has to shift back from the records to reality, in this reality. So, ways to do this, drink water, wash your face, eat some food, go outside, touch nature, bring your awareness back to this moment, to this awareness, to this body, come back here. Um, Linda Howe says that her favorite methods for grounding after a session is to take her dog for a walk or to take out the trash because there is nothing <laughs> that puts you more in your body than taking out the trash. You're just like, oh God, is it going to drip on me? <laughs> you know, nothing brings you more in your body. Also taking your dog for a walk. You can get a little disassociated, but when it's time to pick up the poop, yeah, you're in the body. All right. Um, number five, if you combine this with any other systems, you must honor both systems. So for example, like I said earlier, I use the Jose Silva method of meditation. Um, it is the meditation method that I use a hundred percent of the time. Every single time I meditate, that's what I use. Um, pretty much any time I do any type of spiritual work, that's what I use. It works well for me. I'm a big fan. Um, I will link it below. Let's write that link. Silva. And then the book suggestions. Okay. So, um, yes. Yes. Okay. So if you are using other methods, like I do use the Silva method, you have to honor both methods. In, you don't want to 
cheap out on one method and then compromise another. So for example, now this meditation method that I'm talking about is on the lighter side. It's very easy to honor the method of that and to method of this. However, some other modalities or practices or systems for accessing spiritual knowledge or anything like that sometimes are not that simple. So uh, if the guidelines, if the guidelines of another system does not fit within the guidelines of this system, Linda Howe's pathway process, um, you can't combine them. For example, if you're going to do an ayahuasca ceremony or a mushroom ceremony or any other ceremony that involves us altering body, mind, or spiritual state, altering substance, you can't do these together, okay? So if that's the case, then you do your mushroom ceremony, wait 24 hours before you access the records because you have to honor both. Now, the mushrooms don't... Maybe you do have the roles for the mushrooms if you were doing a ceremony with someone, but like you have to honor both methods because if you're not honoring both methods, you're actually not even doing this. So um, that's something to keep in mind. So if you were like, oh, I want to access the Akashic records while I'm tripping out, you know, uh, don't. No, because like we said, you have to respect. It's an honor and a privilege. You have a responsibility. So you want to approach this uh, properly. Um, yeah, don't mix them, you know? Don't a caution drive, you know? Uh, okay, so guidelines for working with others, you know? These were guidelines for every time you access the records all together for yourself, for anything. Now, these are some additional guidelines when you're doing um, a reading for another person and you're accessing another person's records. So before you access anyone's records, you must have their permission, okay? They have to give you their consent. The rule of thumb that she suggests is they should ask you for a session. You cannot coerce them. This is by invitation only. So you accessing someone's records is invitation only. Uh, you can't be like, hey, there's a welcome mat. I'm going to go in. No, that's not how it works. Um, you cannot tell people that they need a reading. You cannot coerce them into a reading. Even if say you're psychic in general, you have psychic abilities and your guides are letting you know this person needs a reading or their higher self is letting you know they need a reading. Okay, that's not, that's not the rules though. Um, because even if you're getting those psychic messages, um, the person who wants that reading needs to consent in their human form, not their higher self's consent I know sometimes that does work with certain modalities um, and there's nothing wrong with that. Sometimes with like Reiki or some types of healing, people will say, um, I asked the person's higher self if this is appropriate. If they believe it's appropriate, then let them receive this healing. If not, then don't give the healing, give it to the earth. Um, I've seen that a lot of times with different healing modalities. That's fine for those modalities. Those modalities were given to those people in that way. This was not. So no matter how much psychic sense you're getting that someone needs a reading, um, they have to say it. Now, if the person, like you tell them about it and they are excited and want to do it, that's one thing. If you tell them about it and they're kind of like, oh yeah, sure, that's fun. You know, let's do it sometime. <laughs> Don't coerce them. Don't be like, yeah, but your guides are really telling me. This is what we're saying. Respect. Responsibility. Okay? Um, two. Maintain the strictest confidentialities. Do not discuss other people's readings. Um, yeah, that goes without saying. You know, what you're doing is a service 
to humanity. You have a responsibility by accessing this information. It's like a therapist or a priest in confession. You know, um, even if something comes through, like say you do a reading for uh, your cousin and something really interesting comes through and you want to tell your mom, no, don't. Even if it's in your family, even if it's all that type of stuff, don't do it. Um, oh no, my plant Herman. Oh, Herman, I have to check on him. I think one of his leaves broke. Um, I've had Herman for seven years now, so he's pretty big. Um, okay, we'll check on Herman later. Uh, number three of reading for others, the guidelines to follow. Present all the information clearly, kindly, and respectfully as best that you can, okay? The goal of every reading is to dignify and elevate. When you read on behalf of another person, your goal is to dignify and elevate that person. You must respect and you must respect them and reveal their true self and true potential in a gentle way. If you are aware of a person's situation and have your own feelings and your own opinions about it, it's not what's time to share. If you're doing a reading for someone and you have an opinion on something, not the time. Tell them at another time. When you're in the records, you're doing that. It's not your time to say like, mm, yeah, you really should leave him. I never liked that guy. No. Or you have your opinions about the situation and you, the records will know. Remember we said every thought even so if you were accessing the records and then maybe giving information that you felt like say you don't like this person's relationship and you're doing a reading for them and it is your responsibility to tell the information the way that it's being received from the records not what you think is best for the person that's for another time go have lunch Go have coffee with them. Tell them, do not falsely give your opinion and say it's coming from a higher power because that is not right. And you will be the only person who knows the truth on that. But like we said, it will be imprinted into the Akashic records and that will be on your record, okay? So, Stick it to you a little, scare you there, okay? A little bit. Don't, don't violate people in that way. Now this, oh, okay, one more thing about that. Don't withhold information. If it doesn't make sense to you personally, still offer the information to the person because you don't know what the information can mean to that person, okay? And now say you don't really understand the information, you say it, if the person doesn't fully understand it either, that's okay, don't try to make it work. You're not a medium. You're not trying to figure out something. It's not about your ego. Give the information as it is, um, and that's that. Number four, this one is super, super, super important. Okay, um, do not open the records for anyone younger than 18, 18 years old, okay? Um, now, it has come to my attention uh, that sometimes people who are under 18 enjoy my content. Um, it shocks me because I'm like, whoa, just because uh, I'm always giving a lot of information and I think it's great that the younger generation is available and to receive this type of information. I think it's beautiful. I wish I had this information when I was younger. I wouldn't have needed weed all those years. Um, but this is very important. So if you are under 18 years old, um, and you're watching this video and your little heart just got broken because you have to wait to access the records once again. These rules and guidelines are in place to have the integrity of the records, okay? So if my advice to you, if you're under 18 years old and you're watching this, uh, my YouTube settings are actually set for over 18, but if you are watching this, um, practice meditation until you turn 18, okay? You will be a freaking 
wizard, okay? So, like I said, I'm going to link below the Silva method, okay? Um, there is a whole course of learning it, and I suggest you read the book. But there is a meditation by Vishen Lakhiani, um, who I absolutely love. Uh, he created Mind Valley, and I'm going to link that below. Do that centering exercise. And I also have a playlist, if you go to my page, of powerful meditations. So if you're 16 or 17 years old, build up to it. Maybe set the date that you're going to do this on your 18th birthday. Um, just because you want to follow the rules of the method because you want to come to the records with respect. This is not about you and your ego. So I highly suggest get good at meditating. Learn that Silva method because the Silva method, you also can access information if you'd like because when you go to those data waves, you access universal consciousness too. There's no rules about the Silva method being only for certain people of a certain age, okay? So practice that and you, I promise you, you will develop your abilities. You will get other intuitive messages. You will be a wizard. And when you on your 18th birthday go and access the records, it's going to be like, because you're going to be so freaking good at it. Okay. Because you're going to be able to train your brain of how to get to a deep meditative state. So back to why you have to be 18 years old to read the records using this method. This process honors the cultural norms of the United States because this is the place of its origin. In the United States, where this method was given, and this is the thing with spiritual modalities, um, they honor the origin that they were given, which is why if you're using certain shamanic uh, modalities or you're using certain things from Hinduism or from, you know, Christianity, uh, Islam, these different modalities, they do, when you look into it, honor the origin of that place because there was a frequency that happened in order for that information to come through. So that frequency was created in that place. So um, in the United States, a person under 18 is legally responsible. Uh, a person who's under 18 is legally responsible. The legal responsibility of their parents. I, I don't know why. <laughs> I don't know why I could not read that sentence. If you're under 18, your parents kind of are in charge. Um, if you're 16 and emancipated, probably gotta wait till you're 18. If you're in a country that the legal age is below 18, it still honors the origin of this method. So one thing though, some of you who might have children that are under 18 are wondering, oh my God, well, can I access my own kids' records if I, they're my responsibility? No. Um, however, parents can open their own records and ask about their children and ask about raising their children. So you'll still be able to get information about your children, but their records are not to be opened personally yet. However, if you want to say, how can I be a better mom or dad or parent, or maybe you haven't been, you know, happy with the way that you've parented and maybe, you know, you're estranged from your child or never met your child. Um, you know, it happens. Uh, that is for you to access your records and ask those questions, not for you to access the child's records, okay? And then she has this really interesting line here. Uh, she says, all the time people ask, well, what about a really mature 17 year old? She says, if they're actually that mature, they'll be able to wait until they're 18 years old. 
So remember that even if you're under 18 and you're super mature, you do everything for yourself, you know, you pay your own bills, you're like an adult, then you're mature enough to be able to wait until your 18th birthday. Okay. So now let's talk about the kinds of questions that you can ask. Okay. Now, you do want to prepare questions before. All the time when I do, when I do readings for other people, uh, I usually ask for five questions. Um, just because, you know, you guys know, I talk my head off. Uh, my lower self here on this chair talks a lot. My higher self talks just as much. So when I access the records, uh, oh my God, person asks one question, it's like that much text is the answer. So I do five questions usually, um, unless it's absolutely necessary for the person to do more, but that takes about usually about an hour because the amount of information they give me. So I do think it's best to have questions beforehand written out or written out would be good because when you are in that state, you know, you might get excited or whatever. So, uh, write down the questions, um, type them out, whatever you want to do, have them in the notes in your phone. Uh, but questions to avoid questions that start with when you don't really want to ask questions that say when, uh, because the records are eternal. They're not bound by human time on earth and our concept of time. So it's not really beneficial to ask questions that say when. Um, also predictive questions often say when. Um, predictive questions are not really suggested. Um, if you ask a predictive question, they're not going to give you an exact answer. Or if you do get an exact answer, it's probably your ego talking. Now, an example of this is when will I find my partner? When will I meet my soulmate? Um, obviously a bunch of people want to ask that question. Now, if someone, and this is from the examples in Linda Howe's book, uh, if someone asks, uh, when will I meet my soulmate? When will I find my partner? Now, of course she wants to hear like tomorrow, you're going to bump into him or like next week or like in a couple of days right away. Don't worry. Um, that's not going to happen. If that answer comes through, it's not coming from the records. Um, it's coming from yourself and your own hopes and wishes. But in that example of someone asking that question, she says commonly the records would ask, would answer more so like you will find your soulmate um, after you fully forgive your ex and heal from the situation and move on and step into your power and take the next steps in your life to become whole without a partner and then you'll be at the frequency to meet the partner that you want now of course when you do ask the the records they don't talk as casual as I do. Sometimes they do, but there is a wording to what they say, um, at least with my masters. Um, so when you ask predictive questions, don't be disappointed if that's the type of answer you get an answer like, well, after you heal from your past and forgive and move on and release expectations. Um, okay. Avoid questions with yes or no responses. If you're interested in yes or no responses, there's many different modalities. You don't need to use the records. If it's a yes or no question, use a pendulum, use dowsing rods, use one of those like dice. Don't use a Ouija board. Okay. Um, the reason that these don't work is because with the records, the decision is always yours. 
they will not answer for you, okay? Um, see, now, a lot of times people do uh, send questions like this. Sh for example, should I take this job? Should I do this audition? Um, should I this? Should I move? They want yes or no answer most of the time. In my experience of every time I've asked those questions for myself or for other people, they never tell you which to pick. However, they do give you all the information. So for example, um, I knew someone that was going to, she had a choice between moving to a couple of different places. Now each of those places were very important to her. One kind of signified her career more so, one signified her love more so, and one signified her family. And she pretty much would be fine in all of them. It wasn't like any of them were bad choices. So she was pretty conflicted of like, which one should I pick? And the answer was very much like, well, when do you want to start living in your purpose? If you want to see this relationship play out even though you know this is probably not going to work in the way that you want it to um move the partner if the most important thing to you is to spend the time with your parents move back home or do you want to focus on your path as a creative in the industry that you're in and if that is, then you stay here and do this. And they gave the pros and cons of each of them. And I didn't know what she was gonna pick. And when she read it, it helped her make a decision. So I've also had times similar with someone saying like, as similar to this example, which we'll just use this hypothetical example because this is a common one that people ask, should I take this job? Um, or like I got a job offer or it's between two positions, um, two companies, which one should I go with? They're going to give you way out the options of, well, this one would be more so representing this. This one might be more money, but would not fulfill you in this way. You know, this job would be more fulfilling, but maybe not what you're expecting as far as, you know, you'd have a longer commute, but you'd be happier in that position. So it's like, they never really just give you a yes or no answer. If you do just get a flat out yes or no answer, it might be your intuition um, or your hopes and your dreams that you're coming through. Um, okay, the best type of questions to ask are questions that start with what, why, and how. So instead of, should I stay with my partner? A yes or no question, should I stay or should I go? Should I break up with them or should I try to work it out? Is my marriage, am I gonna stay or should I go? Okay, um, a better thing to do is to ask, why am I with my partner? What am I meant to learn from this relationship? What are the advantages of us being together? What are the disadvantages of being together? What am I not seeing in my relationship? How can I see this in my relationship? What can I do right now to find peace and forgiveness and healing in my relationship? Or how can I deal with this in my relationship? How can I improve this in my relationship? Um, why am I feeling this way? You know, these are the questions you want to ask. Um, that also goes for with the hypnosis stuff too. If you're going to do the hypnosis and write down your questions, those type of what, why, how is always a good way to go with these type of modalities. If you're going to do something with a pendulum or dowsing rods, those are more uh, yes or no answers. Okay. What should I expect when I open the records for the first time? 
everyone's going to have a unique experience. The prayer, which we're going to get into. I know uh, you might be getting a little impatient, but these things are really important. Um, me doing this video, as opposed to you reading the book or taking a class, is already way quicker, okay? So let's be patient because, like we said, this is a very um, big responsibility uh, to do. So everyone has a unique experience. The prayer method that we're going to use is intended to shift from your ordinary human consciousness into a universal consciousness. Um, so you may or may not notice this happening. It is not a dramatic shift and will not usually have anything strange or supernatural happening. Most times you're not going to feel something crazy or, you know, have a weird thing. Um, you're not going to talk in funny voices. You're not going to have eyes rolling back. Entities are not going to enter your body. Um, you'll still be you. The difference will be in what you say and the information that's coming through. Also, this prayer calls for only the forces of light. So that's really important to remember. When you're using this prayer, it's calling only on the forces of light. Okay. What kind of information will I get? How will it come through? What will it feel like? What will it look like? What am I going to experience? Okay. Um, you will never get information that belittles you or judges you or shames you. Okay. If that comes through, it's most likely coming from yourself. Okay. And if you do find yourself doing that in a reading and the information's coming from yourself, ask your masters, teachers, and guides, I mean, masters, teachers, and loved ones for the assistance to guide you back to the universal knowledge of the records. You know, if you feel like the records are never going to be like, oh, that was really stupid of you. <laughs> never. Like literally every single time. I've done a reading for myself or for other people, especially for other people. I'm blown away with how beautiful and loving and compassionate it is. And I do have some stories for you at the end of times that I was actually shocked by the compassion because sometimes I was like really pissed about something. Sometimes I'll like ask about like a person and I'll tell you more about that, that like I was pissed. A couple times I was pissed. And when I ask the records, they never give me the information I want to hear when I'm pissed because they are compassionate and loving and they have universal knowledge and a way bigger perspective than we do. Yeah, if you feel these things, know that it is coming from your human self. Ask the master's teachers and loved ones to help you see your soul's true essence and see yourself as a divine spiritual being. Your experience in the records can evolve over time. You might receive information one way initially, but over time with more practice, you might receive information in different ways. Um, you may hear information in your head. It could be words. It could be phrases. You could hear a whole kind of story. Um, it could be sound. Uh, also, Sometimes you'll access your own records or another person's records and maybe it sounds a little different. That's okay because your master's teachers and loved ones might sound a little different from other people's master's teachers and loved ones. In my personal experience, I've been doing this for about a year now, um, it mostly is the same. Um, most for me, the information for myself or for others is very similar. Um, however, like I said, when I'm dealing with them directly, they're very like jovial and funny. Uh, but a lot of times not as joking or casual when it comes to others. Actually, rarely do they joke in other people's readings. So in mine, they say like funny stuff sometimes. Like sometimes I'm like, okay, uh, damn, <laughs> like sometimes I say stuff and I'm like, you are literally like joking the way that I joke. Like they'll have a similar tone to me. 
So I guess it is a little bit different, but the, what I kind of hear and receive is not different, but it could be um, in your experience. Now their tone can come across many different ways. It can be casual, it can be serious, it can be humorous, it could be very um, studious or very like wise or very like kind of like old sounding. You know, actually I'm remembering the first time that I ever opened the records, I got an image of what looked like an old man, but like a cartoon old man kind of. Um, similar to like Merlin in that cartoon, uh, The Sword in the Stone, the one about King Arthur, kind of similar to that. Not with like the wizard clothes, but kind of like that kind of old man type of look. Um, never saw that again after. Uh, for me personally, I am super visual. Every time I meditate, I'm visualizing. I use visualization all the time, all day. I have images in my head all day um, with the records blank, except for the first time I ever tried. But, and obviously with the astral projection experience, that's completely different. Um, that was completely visual. But when I use this method, I have never seen a thing. However, you might. Sometimes uh, you could see something visually. It could be shapes in your mind's eye. It could be colors. It could be auras. It could be energy fields. It could be images, symbols, or even a video, like a movie, you know? Um, see, like I do see movies in my head. Like I see full blown music videos all the time, uh, but not in the records, not when I use this method. It's totally blank inside my head um, visually. Like my third eye is not at all. And that does actually make sense for me. Yours might not be this way, but if she's saying that this method is to use the crown, you know, and I know the crown is also, you know, could be receiving visual information, but if it's coming from the crown to the heart, it might make sense, at least for me, why I'm not seeing as much with the third eye. Um, they could use metaphors or sometimes be literal. Like I said before, um, when they said, this is accessing through the heart, but the time that I did the uh, astral projection, I was accessing through the spleen. And I was like, that's what I mean. They joke with me sometimes. I'm like, the spleen? They're like, yeah, it's, it's a joke. Like, <laughs> you came in through the back door. You didn't come through the front door, you know? Um, but my readings for other people are like so like, and I guess it makes sense. That's their master's teachers and loved ones. So that's the way that they want to give that person their information. Now you can also get emotional or physical feelings in the body. Um, this is not something that happens with me. Um, like I said, I combine it with the Silva method. So I feel like driftwood you know my body feels like driftwood when i do it i don't feel anything um you know my body's like out goes to sleep for the process um if you do feel something in your body uh, physical or emotional if it's uncomfortable for you acknowledge it because there is a lot of people people who are empaths or people who do get kind of like body sensations or can feel other people's pain or other people's emotions physically in their body, that might be your experience when you go to the records, it's possible. So if it's uncomfortable for you or you don't like it or it's distracting you, it's impacting your ability to do this, um, just know it cannot harm you or affect you you can thank the master's teachers and loved ones for giving you the information in this way. Let them know that you've received the message. Ask for the feeling to stop if it makes you uncomfortable. You can also ask, why am I feeling this? What is the purpose of me feeling this? Okay. So do you feel ready now? Uh, we still have more stuff to go over, but we're getting there. So like, is this something that you're willing to like commit to and do these guidelines and follow the instructions and come with respect and 
responsibility and honor your service to access these records? Because if so, keep watching. The records for the first time, okay? Um, so the first time you're gonna do this is gonna be a little different. Now, the first 30 days, you actually, these guidelines are important. However, in the first 30 days, the guidelines are a little bit different. Now, I do suggest if you're going to do this and take this seriously, do 30 days and try to access the records every day. Now, this doesn't mean you need to do a full-blown reading every day or do 30 different people in 30 days. Um, there's gonna be a couple of different things that you can do. Um, and we're gonna go over that in a second. But first, you're gonna want a place that is quiet and where you won't be interrupted. Um, if you don't have a time or a place or a space that you aren't gonna be interrupted, um, that's okay, just save it for another time. There's no rush, okay? Before, you wanna get yourself centered and grounded, okay? There's different ways you could do that. Through it, do it through meditation, do it through a different grounding exercise. Maybe the first time you wanna try it, you do it in the grass, um, would be a nice way to do it. Now, Linda Howe suggests using a pillar of light meditation. Now, there's many different methods for this. You can look up pillar of light meditation. She has one in the book. Um, you might be able to find it on her YouTube. She does have her own YouTube. Um, also, you could find another pillar of light meditation. You could do the Silva method. You can go to the um, playlist that I have called powerful meditations. Those are some that I suggest. Or you could do one yourself, you know, guide yourself through a meditation just on your own. Now, I've said this a hundred times in all different videos and all different things. I'll say it again. I do personally believe that you should do the heart coherence technique before any type of spiritual practice, meditation, modality, everything. You could do it in like 90 seconds. So there's absolutely no reason not to. Put your hand on your chest and breathe into your chest. Feel your heart. Breathe into the heart. And then you're putting your energy towards the heart center. Now you're gonna wanna think about a positive memory, a heart attached memory. So like for me, I've talked about this already, I think about these cows that I know. Um, they're sisters, Holy Cow and Madonna. Uh, they're at the Gentle Barn, I just love them. I also think about um, a dog that I love you know, a couple dogs that I love. I think about them. Um, you think about people that you love. You can think about your mom, think about your kids, anything that's really gonna like, you feel it in your heart. Um, so as you're breathing into your heart, think about those happy cows. <laughs> and then you just keep thinking it and breathing. And this way, your mind and your heart are in coherence. So like you have brain waves and you have a heartbeat. Now what happens all the time is the brain waves are doing this, the heart's doing that, and this is why you have anxiety, okay? <laughs> because you're freaking shooting off different signals. Your body's like, oh, I don't know why I feel so anxious. Nothing's wrong. Um, do the heart coherence technique. Do it every single day of your life. It literally could take like 90 seconds. You have no reason not to. If you do it regularly, it will reset your nervous system. But the reason I say to do it for any type of spiritual practice, any type of modality, um, is because you want your brain and your heart on the same wavelength. You want them linked up. Also, I'm a big believer of everything is a reflection. You know, if you're going to go into the astral plane or another dimension of consciousness, according to Linda Howe, um, if you're going to go into another dimension of consciousness, you're wherever you are, you go outside, you're in a bad mood. The people in the car is a bad mood. The people in the grocery store are in a bad mood because everything is reflecting yourself back to you in our universe. So that's why you get yourself to a place of like, hmm, I really love cows. They're just so cute. Look at their eyes. They're just the sweetest. 
They're like gigantic 3,000 pound dogs. Um, that's where I like to get. Um, you're in that space and then you go out and you're faced with love and compassion. So if you're gonna do stuff in the astral plane or other dimensions of consciousness, you wanna be also reflected back with your same energy. Now there is times where I was really going through it um, and I needed the records advice at that moment and I was not like feeling like in that place of love. Yes, you can access the records still if you're not in that place. Um, but do try your best to be at least a little bit reset and ground yourself as best as you can in order to do that work. And so that you can trust the information that's coming through is pure and has the integrity of the records themselves. Okay. Now you want to begin to focus your attention to the work at hand. This is important work. Okay. Now you would read the opening prayer. Um, I am going to link the opening prayer below. It's from Linda Howe's website. Um, you would read the opening prayer. We're not going to do it just yet because we have more stuff to talk about. Um, but when you do this, it's okay if you read it. Sure, you can memorize it, but it's okay if you read it. There's nothing wrong with that. Um, if you memorize some and want to peek your eye open, that's fine. Just you want to make sure that you're using the right words that were intended and that you're using the prayer in the way it intended. Like we said in the beginning, this is um, a method that's using words, vibration, and light to access the records. So it is important to use the words that are actually in the prayer and to not change it. Okay. After you do the opening prayer, and you say the records are now open, which is the last line of the opening prayer, the records are now open, do not jump immediately into questions. This is gonna be entirely new and unique. Sit there, take it in without judgment. So now the first times and throughout your first 30 days, um, some of those times, but especially your first time, you wanna just sit with the records and feel, experience, don't ask any questions, and then, now you know we said you always want to spend about 15 minutes to an hour. Your first time, spend 5 to 10 minutes just feeling the energy. And then do the closing prayer and ground yourself. The lords of the records have known you since you were born, okay? So your soul was born, okay? Because they're the guards of the primary substance of everything. So they know your soul. So if you enter the records and open them and just sit with them for five to 10 minutes and then close them, that's kind of just like reacquainting yourself with the energy and reacquainting them with your energy. And that's going to give you a little bit of a feeling to do stuff. Now, also, you're not going to have immediate confidence the first time that you try it. So it's okay to not ask questions right away. Now, you could do it this way a few times, but you are going to want to eventually ask questions, I'm sure. And also throughout your 30 days, you might want to do some readings for other people that you know and love. So this first time you close the records, you do the closing prayer. Remember, ground yourself. Either that's water, walk your dog, take out the trash, go in the, the, the grass, you know, ground yourself after and reacquaint yourself back with reality and be like, hmm, that was nice. Congratulations, me. I did a good job. Um, and then write down some notes. How did it feel? Didn't feel like much. That's okay. Nothing wrong with that. Or, hmm, I felt tingly. Or, hmm, I saw some different colors. Or, I didn't get anything at all. Or, I just felt loved. I felt embraced. It could be anything. That's okay. Everyone's going to have a unique experience. So let's talk about your first 30 days, okay? Now, the first 30 days might not be from the moment you receive this information. It's not gonna be just exactly 30 days from right this second. The 30 days is going to be from when you make the decision that you want to start this work. So say you hear this information today, 
but you have a really busy week coming up. That's okay. You don't need to start today. No rush. It's always there. They're everywhere all the time for eternity. It's totally fine. There's no rush. Um, also, if halfway through the 30 days or a couple days into the 30 days, you get totally distracted or something else requires your attention, that's fine. It's okay. But when you are going to commit again, you do want to start the 30 days over, but it don't feel bad about starting the 30 days over. I know myself sometimes if I set a goal, I'm going to do this for 30 days and then something happens, I'll judge myself and be like, oh God, I really, I, I didn't finish 30 days. Don't worry. It's okay. They're literally eternity. It's all things, all time. Everything that ever was, is, ever will be. It's totally fine. There's no rush. And if you have something in your life that requires your attention, it's okay. Don't rush it. Focus on what's important right now in your life because that is important, okay? Now, um, during the first 30 days, you can offer readings to others. So now some of these guidelines for the first 30 days are a little bit different. Um, not contradictory, but you are allowed to tell people, Hey, I'm learning about this. If you're interested, I can ask a couple questions on your behalf, but don't coerce them. We want to hold all of those original guidelines. You want their consent. You want their permission. You want, um, them to feel comfortable and enthusiastic about it or curious about it. You don't want someone to feel like, Oh, sure. If you want to, you know, that's not someone that you want to access their records because you want to be res respectful um, and have integrity. Okay. Um, yeah. If they do seem hesitant, that's okay. You move on. Um, do not collect money in those first 30 days. That is absolutely wrong. Okay. That is like number two after you're allowed to ask people. Two, you're not allowed to accept money in those first 30 days. If you do eventually decide to charge four sessions, you must ask your masters, teachers, and loved ones what is an appropriate price, okay? Like I said in the beginning of this video, um, this video, my intention is not for you to use this one video to like say you're a professional, okay? This video is for you to gain your power and to answer questions that you've been curious about that are important to you, okay? And also to your loved ones. Um, you know, a lot of times people say like, I really wanna do a hypnosis session, but there's no one in my area. I really need to know this. I'm really, I've been so curious about this thing that happened in my life or gosh, this like question I just wanted answered. And you know, I went to a psychic and they told me this, but I didn't resonate with it. That's what I mean. That's what I believe the purpose of this and this video is. Okay. So yes. All right. Um, if you do, like I said earlier, if you do want to do this professionally, I highly suggest know your shit, become an expert. Okay. Become as good as you can. Um, do the research. I think read Journey of Souls, read Destiny of Souls, read Dolores's books. You need to understand reincarnation. You need to read the Bhagavad Gita. You know, you need to read these things and really know your stuff about reincarnation and karma and the soul's journey and the other side. Also, I'm going to link a couple books below. I actually ordered them. I haven't received them yet. Um, but there's a couple books, the, um, Aquarian, oh gosh, I don't know. The Aquarian book of Jesus, the Christ, I think it's called. It was a book channeled from the Akashic records about Jesus. If that's something you're interested in. Um, it's not really like in a Christian aspect, but it is also probably interesting for people who are Christian. Um, another book, um, that I'm going to link below. It's, Akashic records combined with science so that you can understand it better. There's also another book about um, the Akashic records too, which I'm going to link below. These were books that were suggested by Linda Howe. Um, so using her modality, if these are the books that she suggests, 
go for that. Also explore other things, explore the Akashic records in different ways. And then that's it. And I wouldn't just jump right into, you know, charging for readings, you know, have integrity. Okay. Um, okay. And for the first 30 days, do not mix your readings with other systems. Okay. So if you're a Reiki healer, um, totally fine. Uh, don't do Reiki symbols and mix it with this. Not because you can't, but in those first 30 days, you really are using those first 30 days to understand the feeling of the records, understand the way messages come through, understand how this is going to work for you. So if you're mixing modalities, um, you need to make sure that you're actually understand that you're filling the records and that it's not just coming from the Reiki. Okay. So that's what's also important um, with this. Now, we're almost there and I am going to tell you the prayer um, process. Uh, but there is some other really cool uses of the Akashic Records. So like we said, personal and spiritual development, creative endeavors, writing, painting, composing, also advice, guidance, and support, your family life, your community, your job, your health, what you need to ask, okay? Now these are some other interesting uses. Um, pets, okay? So some people are going to want to access the records of pets. Now, your pet, if it's your pet, you have to ask its permission, okay? Even though you're the owner of that pet, you have to ask that pet's permission. Um, so you can ask the dog or cat or whatever, um, you know, hey, honey, <laughs> I don't know, like all the dog names I could think of were so specific. They were too specific. Like I thought of a dog named Nintendo and I know Nintendo. Um, I love him so much. Um, so like, hey, Nintendo, um, can I access your Akashic records? Now, obviously the dog can't ask for permission. It can't invite you to do it, but you, if you do want to access animals, you have to ask that animal for permission. Now, she says there are some different indicators. You could tell by the dog's eyes. If the eyes close, if you say like, hey, can I read your records? And the dog's like, that's a no, okay? Um, if the dog leans into you when you ask or backs into you like, mm, scratch my butt, um, probably a yes, okay? Um, if the dog walks away, or becomes disinterested and that's it, uh, that's a no. So that's okay. Even if you are interested in doing this and you get a no from your pet, that's okay. It's not the time. There's so much time to do things. So don't rush it. Make sure that you have the integrity and the respect for the records, okay? Um, if it's for someone else's pet, you're gonna ask that person um, for permission and Try to do the same process. You know, if someone's asking you to access their pet's records, that is their choice. Um, suggest for them to ask their pet, um, but not super strict with that. Um, you know, a lot of times when people are asking, it is for like different health reasons or something like that, okay? Now, how do you do it? Because you know, we need your legal name to be able to access the records. So if your dog has a legal name, like your dog has documents, um, a card, a tag, use that name. Um, if the dog doesn't have a legal name, then just use its familiar name. Now, what if it's an animal with no name, like the raccoon in your backyard? Um, yeah, you could just say the raccoon in my backyard. That would be acceptable in that situation. And you're probably not gonna do that too often. So, but just to specify. Now, another very interesting thing that you can access in the records because everything does have a record is a home, okay? So if you are the owner of the home, the legal owner of the home, you are able to access the records. 
if you are a legal tenant leaseholder in writing, you are able to access the records of that house. Um, if you are looking to buy a house, okay, this is important. If you're looking to buy a house, you are allowed to access its Akashic records. However, the house needs to be open. So like if there's an open house, you know, this house, this listing is open house, um, you are allowed to because when that person does an open house, it means that they are also in the other dimensions opening that house. So that's um, safe. If the house is on the market and it's an open house, you can do that. Um, but if that listing has expired or has been sold or is no longer open, uh, no not okay um that would be disrespectful to the home to the owners to the records okay um now what type of questions would you ask in a house you know uh so one of the things is how can this home support its inhabitants okay now a better way she said sometimes when you're accessing for something like a home, it is hard for some people to read those records, especially less experienced people, or maybe that there's not that type of connection um, to the house. It might be very difficult to get anything um, or to get clear information or much information. So a better way to do this most of the time would be to open the owner's records with their permission, with their consent, with their invitation, they asked you. Um, then ask about the home within that person's records. And that way you're able to get actually a lot more information because you're asking on behalf of the person. You know, is this home the right home? Now see, that's a yes or no answer. Um, so you wanna say, how would this home benefit this person? What are the advantages of this home? What are the disadvantages of this home? Um, so you see how, what, why, okay? Um, now, there can also be Akashic records for objects and buildings, okay? Um, in those cases, it would have to be at the request of the owner. Once again, not very not a lot of like emotions and stuff are gonna come through because those objects, I don't think they have masters, teachers, or loved ones. Maybe they do. I guess everything has consciousness, but they might not be super invested in the way that a soul would have, okay? So once again, you could open the person's records who owns that object, who owns that building, okay? What about public places? such as a city or a town. It is a public place, so you are allowed to access it. Um, but once again, you might not get so much, you know, but if it is something that you're very connected to, if like you're just so like drawn to this place on a map that is not private property, um, is actually like say a city that is not owned by anyone, um, I mean, I guess if you're like in the UK, everything is kind of owned by the monarchy. I don't know how that would work. Um, that wasn't in the book, sorry. Um, but public places such as a city, um, which is owned, I guess, by the government. I don't know. We're getting into real like obscure stuff that you'll probably never use, but just to go over it because I do want you guys to have as much of the information that you need you can access a city or a town's records. Now, what about a company? Okay. Um, you or the person asking for the reading would need to be the CEO of that company. Now, when you are doing the opening prayer, the word that you would give is the legal name. Okay. So it would be the legal name of the company. How does the IRS know this company? That's what you ask for when you do the opening prayer. 
Now, if you work at a company, you can't just access the records just because you're an employee, okay? If you are a department head, you're in charge of an entire department, like say you are the head of marketing, you will be allowed to ask the records for your department. So you need to be fully in charge, legally in charge, not like, mm, I'm kind of a manager. I kind of do what the managers do. Not really, okay? So you would need to legally be the head of the department and you can only look into your apartment, okay? So, The Pathway Prayer um, by Linda Howe. This is a little picture of Linda Howe. Um, she's a little grandma lady, okay? Um, so, this Pathway Prayer is to open the records. So, you're gonna see in the link below, there's an opening prayer and a closing prayer. Okay, now we're gonna go by paragraph. So there's opening prayer, paragraph one, paragraph two, paragraph three, and then the records are now open. Okay, so let's focus on this here. Now there is a couple of little technicalities when you're reading for another person. The way that I read for other people, um, I have them send me the written, um, questions. I do my process, which I would read this in the way that is instructed, which we're going to go over. And what I actually do is I put my phone, I go to the notes section, and then I lay down to do this. I get myself in a meditative state. I do the prayer. And then I put my phone on my chest, um, mind over matter on the EMF. Y'all don't give so much fear to what is inside that phone or the energies or whatever, the frequencies know that your mind can always overpower whatever. So um, I put my phone on my chest and then um, I do speech to text. And what I do with my eyes closed, um, I actually just say the words. So I do the prayer out loud, then I say the question out loud, and then I say the answer out loud and I do speech to text. Now you also could do a recording if you just wanna do an, a voice recording. Now what we said here on page one is that the words we assign to the information that's coming through, it facilitates the movement of energy. So that's why I like to do it in the spoken form. However, I would not feel comfortable doing that with the person in the room. If you feel comfortable doing it with the person in the room, then that's the way that you can do it. Um, there is a lot of people who, like me, would give someone a written document and let them read it on their own time. Um, it's not for me to go over with them. Uh, that's totally theirs. They can read it at their own pace. They can handle the information. I don't need their feedback on it. I don't need their confirmation. I don't need their validation of whether it resonates or not because you really just accept it. If you find yourself still after the reading, still getting messages or feeling very invested, you're going to want to repeat the closing prayer because you maybe are still kind of a little bit up there. Okay. So you want to make sure to kind of, uh, not saying like cut that cord or that connection, but also, you know, for your own energy and your own health, you do want to have a little bit of separation. Of course, these are people that you love and care about and you are invested in their development and their advice that they need and the guidance that they need, but you don't want to get like a martyr or like a savior complex over it, okay? So, um, this opening prayer. So we have paragraph one, paragraph two, paragraph three, and then the records are now open. So you read paragraph one, two, three out loud. Then you go back and read paragraph three two times silently. So I'll read this out loud for you. And one thing to keep in mind, which we did touch on a little bit, is that because this information was channeled or given, not channeled, was given to Linda Howe um, 
in the United States. She said she was in the Midwest of the United States when this happened because that frequency was there and the origin of this, the information that came through has um, Christian wording, okay? So don't get thrown off by the Christian wording. This is the wording that was given to access the records. If you're not Christian, it doesn't mean that you can't use these words. Um, if you are Christian, then it might make you a little bit more comfortable. So, so we do acknowledge the forces of light, asking for guidance, direction, and courage to know the truth, as it is revealed for our highest good and for the highest good of everyone connected to us. That's paragraph one. You read that out loud. Paragraph two. O Holy Spirit of God, protect me from all forms of self-centeredness and direct my attention to the work at hand. That's um, paragraph two. Now, in the case you're doing this for someone else, you don't read the self-centeredness part out loud. Um, but honestly, I usually do end up reading it out loud because the person's not in the room, so they're not hearing it, so it is okay. Um, paragraph three. Help me to know myself or the name of the individual. Now, see, say it here. It says here, first name of the individual. So when you read it out loud, you could just give the first name in front of the person. When you read it to yourself, you give the full legal name. However, for me, I actually just use the full legal name every single time, okay? Help me to know myself, full legal name, in the light of the Akashic Records. To see myself, full legal name, through the eyes of the Lords of the Records and enable me to share the wisdom and compassion that the masters, teachers, and loved ones of me, full legal name, have for me. Or in this case, it would be someone else's legal name. And in that case, you would say him, her, them, um, if that's your thing. Uh, then you go back and read it two more times silently in your head. Or if you haven't remembered, say that prayer two times inside of your head and then after that, when you do the part in your head is, for me, I do feel a shift of consciousness, but like she says, um, most people probably won't. And then you say, the records are now open. Now remember what we said, the first time you do it, you just sit there for five minutes, take it in five to 10 minutes, and then do the closing prayer. But if it's you've been practicing, you can ask your questions during this time, wait a little bit, and then do your questions um, anywhere from 15 to an hour. And then you do the closing prayer because you want to express gratitude for the masters, teachers, and loved ones and to the Akashic Records. So I would like to thank the masters, teachers, and loved ones for their love and compassion. I would like to thank the lords of the Akashic Records for their point of view. And I would like to thank the Holy Spirit of Light for all knowledge and healing. The records are now closed. Amen. The records are now closed. Amen. The records are now closed. Amen. So, um, some people might be a little triggered by some of these Christian words. Sorry, that was like a reverse burp. I don't know what that was. Um, but if you are a little bit uncomfortable with these words, sorry. Don't change them. This is a frequency. This was given as a frequency. The reason that they're using the Holy Spirit of Light um, is to call in the forces of light, to call in the source without being um, specific, you know, kind of like what I like to a lot of times call like the white light or the healing light, you know? So like, don't get caught up on the words here. Just know that these words were of the origin of the frequency of when it came through. Um, you know, these are not based off of Linda Howe's beliefs. These are based off the frequency of the place of origin, okay? The same reason why the thing ha with the 18 years old, okay? That's because it's to honor the origin of this place the same way that, you know, things that were originally given to Hindu culture 
are using the words in Hindu culture. You know, the, um, you know, Native American traditions. This is using words of the place of origin. You know, like I do know this is the Midwest, so um, the place of origin isn't, you know, strictly Christian, but in the place that she got it, that was the frequency that it was given. That's what that is, okay? Um, I'm gonna link that below so you can download the PDF. I'm also going to remind you Paragraph one, two, three, out loud. Paragraph three, silently. Paragraph three, silently. The records are now open, out loud, okay? Closing prayer, fully out loud, the whole thing out loud, okay? The way she says it is a little confusing in the book. That is the simplified version um, of it all. That is the simplified version of the whole darn book, okay? Um, so, now, this is a very important question, and this is where I'm gonna give you guys a little bit of personal experiences with the records. Um, what is the difference between the Akashic records and intuition? So in the book, she asks that question, and she gives a really great example that I'll paraphrase for you. And then I'll give you a couple examples of my own um, that are pretty interesting and funny, and like I said, that like how I know the information isn't just coming from me because these are examples of times I really didn't want to hear this information. And my own human self would never have came up with that freaking information. So um, what is the difference between the Akashic Records and intuition? So in one of her classes, Linda Howe had a student who um, was working with the records and practicing. And basically her husband started to get interested in archery. And she's like, oh, that's fun. And then her husband's like, okay, well now I wanna like shoot a deer. And she's like, oh, you wanna kill an animal? What the, I'm not comfortable with that. She's like, you know, this is a hobby, not murder, okay? So her intuition. So this is a good example too. If you wanna practice the difference between your intuition and the Akashic Records, ask the same question to both. So Linda Howe says that most people are gonna get slightly different information, not contradicting or conflicting information. Some people will get exactly the same thing, but she says that's actually pretty rare, that because with your intuition, you're getting the information from your higher self, from your own soul's frequency. When you're accessing the Akashic Records and with practice of being able to receive the information, which is why you want to do 30 days of practice and really honor the system and get used to it and feel the energy and know what's coming through, um, you're getting information that's universal. It's universal consciousness. It's coming from the primary substance that everything was before we individualized it with our personal consciousness. You're getting information from something that has been imprinted with every single frequency everywhere that has ever happened through thoughts, words, emotions, actions, deeds, non-deeds, not doing the thing, all of it, um, in every place, at every time, everything. So, you're gonna, some people are gonna get the same information. She said most people are gonna get slightly different information, not contradictory, but more broad. So um, with the hunting story, uh, the woman asks, you know, meditates on her intuition and what she feels like um, when she does the intuition, she's like, why is it bothering me so much that he wants to go hunting? So, she asks her intuition and basically the answer is like, um, well, I would never kill an animal, so I'm not really comfortable with him killing an animal. Also, what if it's dangerous? I'm concerned for his safety. I am concerned, what if he's out there and gets shot by another hunter? You know, and she gets this whole thing and she's like, oh, I get it. It's really just about like, I wouldn't do that and I'm concerned and I'm worried about him, okay? So then she asks the Akashic Records. And I'll tell you, the Akashic Records, I'm telling you, they won't shame you, but they will check your ass. 
because she said she opens the records and this woman is like, the records are like, mm, don't fool yourself. You eat chicken, pork, beef. You eat animals all the time. Someone had to kill those. You clearly, it's not about that. And they basically explained to her that you feel a bit unhappy in your marriage because you guys don't spend quality time together that you crave. The quality time together that you once had together, you don't do that. And you feel by him getting another hobby, you're a bit jealous that you want the time to yourself and that's okay. But you do need to acknowledge that the reason you feel uncomfortable with him going to hunt is not only because you're concerned about the animal or your moral compass, there's a part of you that actually wants him to spend that time with you. Sorry, my plant, Herman, is opening a leaf. This leaf, every time I look at it, is more open. I actually saw a leaf open one time. It happened at like three o'clock in the morning. And I mean, it's, it's about to be three o'clock in the morning. So this is the time that leaves open. If you want to watch your own plants do that, but that's crazy. This is the second time I've seen this happen in my life. Not on Herman. It was another plant, but wow, the plants really open at 3 AM, huh? Um, so, okay. That was the information that she got. Now, I want to just tell you a little bit about um, the experience that I had because, okay, so I had, without giving too much details, many years ago, about 20 years ago, I had a relationship that didn't work with someone when I was very young. Um, we had a falling out. The person insulted me. I insulted them back. Maybe I was better at insulting. Maybe it's harder to insult me because I was insulted by my own father a lot. So I was maybe not hurt as much by it. I don't know why we both insulted each other. You know, I was a teenager. Um, why this person up until just last year um, continued like someone that I have not talked to, interacted with, or anything. This person has sent me hateful messages, writes negative reviews on things that I do publicly, um, literally has for nearly 20 years will resurface to do things, nasty stuff. Um, I also don't really give a shit, you know, like, dude, Get it. This is your problem. Like what? I, it, you're not hurting my feelings by doing this. You're annoying me, but I'm not bothered. I think it's weird. Um, also, this person also did some type of like ritual to curse me. It's the extent, you know, I mean, like I said, I live this weird, hilariously fucked up situations all the time so this is like I can't even if I was to ever go through the stories of like the weird interactions that people have with me that they go way too far uh you'll have to wait for the memoir um but so whatever it had been about 18 years since our falling out and last year this person who most of the time, like, I don't see these messages as much as they come through because we're not like friends or anything. So it'll be like a message request. So I'll see them very much later than what they were sent. This person contacts me again. And it's kind of like going on again. And I was like, already had just gone through a breakup at that time, which I'm the other story I'm going to tell you is about that breakup. Um, I had just gone through a breakup and I was like, what the fuck? Move on with your life. It's been nearly two decades. I'm literally 
in my 30s. Are you serious? Because what? I insulted you? You insulted me worse. You did rituals to curse me. You've continued to insult me for nearly 20 years. When is enough? Okay? So I was angry and frustrated. So I blocked him. And then I got right into the records. And this is what I mean. is like you do want to get heart-centered and grounded before. But sometimes I wouldn't suggest in your first 30 days. I think really in your first 30 days, go really hard to make sure that you are doing this in a way where you can feel the frequency and get comfortable with the frequency. But this, you know, like I said, I had been doing it about a year, um, maybe a little over a year. So it was like probably around a year at that point that this um, thing happened, incident. Um, so I was like, I blocked him and was like, damn, what, what is this about? Why? So I go to the records, do the prayer, you know, I do my meditation and my prayer, but I'm still like, my heart is like, oh, get over it. Move on. Leave me alone. And I'm like, I ask the records. I'm like, why? Why won't this person just move on? I cut the cord. I've cut the cord before. I'll go into the astral with a freaking chainsaw and cut the cord between us a thousand times. How do I stop this? I'm tired of it. Especially I'd already just gone through a breakup. So I was so tired of it. Ugh, guys in general, you know, I was so angry. And I was like, why? Why doesn't this person stop? Um, and the records are say, said, well, the reason he won't go away is because you owe him an apology. I was like, what? Like, I like jumped out of the records. I was like, excuse me, I owe him an apology. The last time that I said anything to him was so long ago. Why the fuck do I owe him an apology? Nope, I don't want to do it. I don't like it. No. Um, so then the records explained to me, uh, regardless, I hurt this person's feelings. And it doesn't matter what this person has said and done and relentlessly done to try to hurt my feelings. Um, I hurt theirs and that's my responsibility. So I need to apologize. And you know, the records have never strayed me in the wrong direction. So I was like, okay, well, I guess I'll unblock them and send a message and apologize and say, you know what? It's been a very long time, clearly, if you're still trying to do this and say these things to me and about me, um, clearly I've hurt you and I apologize for hurting you. And they milked it a little bit. They milked it and I was like, hmm, I'm, gonna, I'm gonna stick to my apology here. I milked it a little bit more and I'm like, okay, well, I'm sorry for that. I, I'm sorry. And then you know what? It eased over and you know, it was only a very short matter of time before this person became disrespectful again. Um, and then I cut the ties like that, but I cut the tie knowing that I did apologize for what I did and which really was like a response to this person insulting me. Um, and saying all of this horrible stuff about me, but I don't really care. So that's what the records also let me know is that like, even though this person has done all this stuff, I'm not the one that's hurting. So I am the one that should give the apology, which I didn't really like that answer, but I did it and I felt good that I did it. Um, has the person messaged me after that? Oh, for sure. For sure. Um, but I know I did what I did and what I had to do. Okay. So I did it. Um, also another time, another example of kind of some of the information that can come through with the records, um, in my most previous, most previous, most recent, uh, breakup, um, 
which I've lightly touched on. Um, so there was betrayal, there was cheating. Actually, almost all of my relationships, romantic relationships, um, have had cheating. Um, and that's like really a trigger for me because it's something that ever since I was a child, my dad was cheating on my mom when I, when she was pregnant with me, it was very much, I got like kind of blamed for my parents' divorce because it was a gaslighting situation, even though I was literally like in the womb, you know, um, that'll be in my memoir too. Uh, so we won't get into all that now. But, um, so that's something that's a very like intense topic for me and also a triggering thing and also something that sets me into a blind fucking rage, no matter how much like work I've done, then to like pretty much, I did so much work over the years of all the spiritual stuff, psychological stuff, emotional stuff, child stuff, family trauma, generational stuff, inner child, all of this. So like, I finally in my last relationship felt like I was in a different relationship. And I also picked a partner that was very different than anyone I would have dated in the past. Um, he didn't have a lot of the qualities that I looked for in partners before that. He did lack some of those things that I liked, but he also had a lot of qualities that I never had in a partner before, which was to be very like supportive and nurturing and compassionate um, and in my other partners, they might've been a lot more successful and a lot more driven, but they were kind of lacking in some of like their more feminine aspects of their personality, more feminine energies. Um, so this was someone that was completely different after all this work that I had done. I was like, you know what? This is good. This is different than what I thought I wanted. Um, but I feel really loved and supported by this person. So this is, this is good for me. Um, so then when all of that, all of the changes and the work and the things that I did differently and in my past relationships, I did get into arguments and stuff cause I was younger. Um, but in this like relationship, we pretty much like never argued. Um, which was also a shock for me to find out that I was being cheated on because usually the other times I suspected and that's what we were fighting about was that I thought they were cheating. Um, and this time I was very blindsided by it. And so I was very like, how the hell did this happen? How could this happen? And how could I do everything different and still end up with the same result? Is it a curse? what the hell? So I asked the records, like, I, sometimes, you know, you ask questions. Sometimes I do kind of also give statements before a question and I let them know, like, I'm really confused because, um, I did everything different. How did I end up with the same result? I feel very like discouraged and defeated actually, because I really felt if I did everything different, I would get a different result. And the fact that I'm getting the same result is really messing me up here. So, especially too, I mean, we were dating for like four years, so it wasn't like, uh, you know, willy nilly, you know? But the message that they gave me was helpful and had a great perspective. Um, so they said, actually, even though I did everything different, there was something that I didn't change that I probably overlooked because it looked different to me this time. So they said in past relationships, I stayed a bit longer than I would have because of the wrong reasons, basically. Like in some relationships, maybe the people were kind of promising me something or like promising this certain future or this certain thing or a success or kind of thinking that like, oh, okay, this person, I'm not comfortable in this relationship anymore because I feel like I'm being cheated on, but I'm going to stay because whatever, um, 
reasons of like insecurity of like, am I going to get someone like this again? Am I, you know, is this the best options, you know? Um, so I stayed with people because like for the wrong reasons. Um, and in this past relationship, they told me, which I didn't see this perspective until they said it. Um, I would have probably never been able to see this perspective without the Akashic Records. Um, because in my mind, I had done everything different. How could it be the same? And they said, actually, there was one really important thing that you didn't do different, which is the reason why you're in this situation, which is you stayed more than your heart wanted you to stay. Like your heart was kind of over this, but you stayed because of how this person made you feel. You didn't stay because you were so in love. You stayed because you liked that this person loved you, that they supported you, that they comforted you, that they were a companion. You So even though you weren't staying maybe for like material reasons or those reasons, you still did the same thing, but just on the other end of the scale. You stayed for basically emotional support and comfort and not love. And they said at the end of the day, you, this is gonna happen every fucking time because unless you do it for love. And they're like, we're telling you right now, do not be with anyone unless you absolutely love them. If you're being with them because they look good on paper or if they check off the boxes or they have certain qualities that you think you want or things that you have in your mind thought up. Um, yeah, those are not the reasons. And I'm not saying that's the reasons for everybody. Um, other people do have their other reasons. For me, living my life in my purpose, in my truth, in the way that I need to, now I see at that time, I didn't even know that I was gonna be in this position to be making videos like this and sharing information. Now I realize why I do need to be completely in my truth. Um, I'm not in survival. I need to be in my purpose. And for me to be in my purpose means like, I can't settle. I can't be with someone because they make me feel good. They boost my ego. You know, I mean, that's the reality of it. So I was like, I got up from that reading like, ouch, damn. Guess there's still more work to do. Okay. Um, also, sometimes the records kind of like drop little like bombs on me. Like one time, and you guys have seen my video about um, my UFO experience. Um, my whole life, I've kind of wondered what that was about. Um, even under hypnosis, I didn't get clear answers. One day, they just straight up told me it was Grays. It was Grays on the UFO that day and that there's a hybrid program. And they use using me in that hybrid program. I was like, I was laying down because most of the time I do do the readings. I mean, 100% of the time I do them laying down um, because like I said, I get my body to be driftwood. So you got to be laying. And uh, I like popped up with my heart racing. I was like, excuse me, Gray's hybrid program? I didn't even fucking ask that question. Why would you give me that information? Oh, see, I think we lost our mic. Well, that's okay. That's what I told you guys. The sound was probably going to cut out at some point um, because uh, I dropped the other one in the toilet by accident. Well, I have one more thing for you guys, a message from the Akashic Records for you. So here we go. Okay, so before I go, I just want to share this message that the Akashic Records gave me um, earlier today. Uh, for you guys, okay? Um, anyone watching this video who wants to uh, access the records, okay? Hello to all that are interested in embarking on this journey into your own Akashic Records. 
your masters, teachers, and guides welcome you to be embraced by the exquisite, infinite nature of your own soul. If you feel it is time for you to explore this aspect of yourself, we wish to remind you to keep your intentions pure and of service to the greater good when working with this aspect of yourself. It has come, it has become too far common, far too common for ego to cast its shadow over the pure intentions that lead people here to the records. It is okay to ask questions and please know that ex you are accessing records It is okay to ask questions and please know accessing the records is for all. You are special, but no one is more special than another. We ask you to please use your time in the records to remember why you are here on earth at this time and do not fall into using it for personal gain. We do not wish to imply that you cannot benefit or help others by using the records, but please remember if you are drawn to this video, it is because your soul is yearning to tell you something about itself. And Jennifer, when they call me by my full name, and Jennifer has been asked to make this video because many of you are receiving so much outside information, but do not trust the information that is within you. Many of you are more willing to listen to outside sources before listening to your own intuition. And this is why we ask you to develop this skill if you feel called to do it, to truly step into your own purpose and to allow the higher aspects of yourself the higher aspects of yourself that exist on earth at this time. It is so crucial for you, for the planet, for your health and for the health of others to truly embody the exquisiteness of your soul. We would like to remind you, do not fall into what others tell you because there are many who have lost touch with source and are speaking out of their ego, ego under the guise that they are somehow gifted and you must pay them in order to know about yourself. And that is the reason we have asked Jennifer to share this information because you all have the answers available to you and it is a tool to give you that power back. You can also ask the records for healing or advice or how to improve your life but do not become dependent on us. We are only a tool to help you remember who you are. With much love, and if you feel called to meet us, we promise to honor you and ask that you honor yourself by using this tool with only the purest intentions. Thank you. And like I said, they joke with me all the time because then after that, I'm like, any advice for me? And they said, oh, there's always advice for you, dear one. And then they bring up my boob because I was having a pain in my boob. I'm telling you, they joke with me. But you see how they talk to you? They talk to you like so beautifully, but then they tell me like, what did you want to ask about your boob? And I said, yeah. And they said, that's, you know, your hormones, you're ovulating. 